folks, welcome to Board Game Corner. I'm Mark. And I'm Randy. This week we're taking a look at Let the Meat Shrimp. We're going to be using fish, sharks, and squids. Let the Meat Shrimp is a tile placement game for the whole family. It was a successful Kickstarter in 2014 from Dr. Finn's Games. It plays two to five players, ages six and up, in approximately 20 to 30 minutes. Today we'll be reviewing not only the base game, but also the shark versus squid expansion. Yes. At the start of each game, everyone is dealt four different fish tiles of varying sizes. Uh, they represent the fish you're going to be using, their saltwater ex exotic fish throughout the game. Also, there are tokens, fish to or fish egg tokens throughout the game, and you get three of these at the start of the game. Uh, they represent wild, basically a wild card. And then throughout the game, you will be collecting, uh, potentially collecting, I should say. Uh, um, not squid, but <laughs> shrimp. Uh, shrimp uh, you'll be collecting shrimp tokens, which are worth points as well. Right. In Let the Meat Shrimp, the board represents the sea, and the sea is full of both treasures and danger. Lots of danger. Lots of it. <laughs> Too much. Players will take turns placing their tiles on the board. If they cover a space with a shrimp, they'll collect a shrimp token, which is worth two points at the end of the game. If they cover a space with a color geometric symbol representing fish eggs, they will add the corresponding type of fish tile to their collection. Mm -hmm. If they cover a starfish, they'll roll a dice to see which type of fish tile they'll add to their collection. But if they cover a portion of a shark, they will roll the dice to determine what type of tile they lose. Right. Which is bad. <laughs> very bad, because you can end up losing all your key tiles. Yep. Now, if you don't have a tile of that type to lose, you can use a fish egg as a wild token, and that substitutes for the tile you're supposed to lose. Mm -hmm. If you don't have either the tile of that type or a fish egg, then you're out of the game. <laughs> Likewise, if it comes your turn to place a tile and you don't have either a tile or a fish egg to turn in for a tile of your choice, you're out of the game also, as well. Yeah, and that's one of the ways the, the game can end, <laughs> is if all players are out of the game except for one, then that player wins the game. Yep. Now there are other ways that the game can end. Uh, one of them is that if uh, there are no spaces left that have um, anything good on them. There are only uh, sharks showing. The game ends at that point. Also, if there's no legal place to play the large hex tile, the game ends as well. In either of those cases, there are many players who might still be in the game, and those players then uh, calculate their scores by forming the remaining tiles into sets and uh, adding their points based upon those sets. The player with the most points wins. And the egg tokens can be used to complete those sets. Correct? Absolutely true. Yes. The egg tokens represent wilds. And so um, in the context of a set, they can add to your point value. By themselves, the egg, to egg tokens aren't worth anything at all. Right. And then the board itself has two sides. It does, yes. There are, uh, they're numbered, and numbers. the number one is much easier than two, and so forth, all the way up to six. So if you want to start easy, you can. And then once uh, you've learned the game a bit, you can play four through six and challenge yourself even Which more. Which is very challenging. It actually. can be. It's good. <laughs> also, if you want a little more strategy, the game comes with some advanced rules. In the advanced rules, everyone is given a play mat. Now, this play mat... Um, you place your fish tokens on it, and you have to use a complete set of four. And this set of four tokens has to be played in four rounds, and you can't use a duplicate token until you've completed the set of four. Um, and it just adds a little more strategy to the game. Actually, it, a fair amount of strategy that we found. It's been pretty fun. Yeah, and, and unlike playing purely behind the, the uh, player screens as you do in the basic game, you can see what other players have to play as they uh, mm -hmm. move one tile at a time off of those player mats, and so you can anticipate what they can and can't do. That makes it a little bit more challenging. Definitely. Now, there's also an expansion for Let Them Eat Shrimp called Squid vs. Shark. So just in case you thought that sharks were the king of the seas, there's actually a predator that trumps the sharks. That's right. Allies to your fish. They are indeed, because when you cover a shark with a squid token, you don't lose anything. You actually gain something. Beside the board, there will be three piles of, of uh, circular shark tokens, valued one, two, and three. When you cover a, uh, a shark, a portion of a shark or a whole shark, with a squid token, you actually get the lowest value of, of shark token beside the board. Now, what you're trying to do is you're wanting everybody else to use their squid tokens so they collect the low values, and you want to swoop in at the end to collect the high exactly. values. Uh, so that's uh, an alternate way of playing, and it does add a, a variation yep, that it makes does. it kind of fun. Yep, and they're more of a shark trophy than a token. Oh, no, that's true, yeah. <laughs> we'll mount these on our walls. Mount those on our walls. <laughs> 
All right, what do we think of this game? So, well, you know, this is a family-friendly game, yeah. a very family. I got my parents to play, and they really enjoyed it. And if my folks, my folks come to visit occasionally, and I wouldn't hesitate to bring this out for yeah. them as well. And then it even has some ramp up to a little more strategic type game. Right there, are, there are these three boards, uh, as we said, they're yeah. numbered, and you can play them. Easy side up or hard or side up. With lots of sharks on the other side. And then there are the rules that you can add. And you can play the advanced version mm -hmm. instead of the basic version add some additional challenge. Really, I'm really surprised at how well this game actually just ramps to give you a really different um, game. Really, it's really, a, what, three different games in one. It, it feels that say. way. Yeah. And, and if you like games like Blockus or mm, Ingenious, right. yeah. Um, I think it's the same type of tile laying game with a little bit of thought. Now, this, this I would say this has a little more strategy to it. It probably does, yeah, yeah. and less, less about geometry than it is about uh, thinking about scoring. Yeah, as and you know, on tiles. thinking a couple moves ahead. Exactly, trying, there's definitely some of that. <laughs> So, um, you know, I think that's a really good fit. It's very family friendly. Very, it's generally a lighter game, um, but it's been pretty fun so far with the people we played. It with. has, and and, and uh, it's fun looking at little artworks. You find, uh, yeah, you find that there are different, very small variations in the fish artwork as you right. look at them more closely. Now, one of the things I like to see a little different in the game is that I find that across the table, the fish tiles blend in probably too much with the board i would like to have seen the tiles like a dark blue versus the light blue you know just to distinguish them at least some contrast right there, there should be know. more contrast there because they i don't know as you're looking at this whether you can see but but they do tend to blend in a lot it doesn't doesn't really impede gameplay no, at all but it, not, i think it would no. be a little bit more accessible if it, there right. were greater contrast there yeah and in a smaller setting a smaller table it's not as big of a deal but in a larger group um you know it it, it definitely people are getting up looking around um, off, it's just a little harder to read sometimes. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't deter. It's still just Not as fun. Um, I, just something we'd like to see. And also, it would be nice just to have a bigger board in general. True. Or, or more boards. Or more you boards. Yeah. Yeah. To have it even a larger, just scale right. out to a larger board. That would be cool. So, the very few things not to like about this game. Yeah. I mean, other than the fact that if you're into heavy strategy games, this probably isn't for you. It's not going to fit your bill. Not at all. But the nice thing is this uh, this is such an easy game to learn. Yes. And, and there's no variation. 15 minutes easily. You can yeah, teach someone. Not even that. And, well, and yeah. we appreciate the, the back of the player cards or play, uh, player screens, um, keeping in mind the whole game, what you're looking for to score the most points. Exactly. All right, now to our verdict. So, again, this is a family-friendly game, and we're reviewing it on that level. Right. So I'm going to give it a, a three out of four corners. And I'll do the same. Uh, as a tile placement game for mm -hmm. the family, I think it, it uh, is a solid game. Yeah, it hits and, the mark for and sure. It, it does, yeah. indeed. Yeah. Yep. And if uh, Dr. Finn's Games produces any more expansions, I'd be certainly happy to oh, play them. Definitely. I think I would play several expansions for this. Yeah. Um, I really, again, I have to say, I really like the fact that it's a, a game that I can suck like my parents into. <laughs> you know, this is, and they're not really gamers, so it, it says a lot about this type of game. So, just suggestions you can either add whales or my particular preference, you should add tornadoes. Tornado. Because the tornadoes Water and sharks, sharks. Tornadoes oh, and sharks yeah. go together. We know that. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> All right, folks, thanks for watching, and until next time, we'll, we'll see you at the table. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com. <laughs>